A group of athletes is calling out the University of Oregon's track and field program for unhealthy practices. They say how the team monitors weight and body fat among athletes has led to physical and mental health struggles. Catherine Cook talked with a writer who broke the story. I didn't really seek this out. I mean, I was retired, right? Um, and uh, I didn't plan to spend two months working on a story. Sports writer Ken Go says the story he couldn't ignore started last summer with emails he got from six female track and field athletes. All of them competed at the University of Oregon and all of them left, five with eligibility remaining. They had some concerns about what Coach Johnson was doing with the program. Robert Johnson, head track and field and cross country coach at Oregon since 2012. He has multiple national titles under his belt. But when it comes to athletes' health, Go reported in the Oregonian, the women felt devalued. They also felt at risk for eating disorders. They blamed the program's data-driven approach to their weight and body fat percentages. Three times a year, all track athletes are required to undergo a DEXA scan. It uses x-ray technology to measure bone density and body fat percentage. Athletes who didn't meet certain standards were assigned extra cardio workouts. Some say they were told they couldn't travel to away meets if they didn't lower their body fat percentage. Athletes told Go it led to eating disorders, emotional distress, body dysmorphia, and nightmares. And instead of realizing their dreams, it crashed on them. And they're uh, in their room at night counting calories or, or binging or um, just feeling bad about themselves because they're not at a certain um, body fat percentage, well, then you start to feel like, well, they need a voice, right? Go says all six athletes asked to remain anonymous. He says they're scared of being ostracized by longtime Oregon sponsor Nike or being banned from the world's biggest track meets, most hosted by the University of Oregon. And so for these women to come forward, even anonymously and speak out uh, in this situation, I think is remarkable because they're they're taking a risk. It's a risk many are applauding at a critical time in the sport. This month, former Nike distance runner Mary Kane filed a $20 million lawsuit against Nike and former coach and Oregon star Alberto Salazar. She's claiming emotional abuse, including fat shaming that led to an eating disorder. Kane's attorney shared her thoughts on what she believes is an industry-wide problem. These athletes who have been abused and neglected have the strongest drive and commitment to themselves that I've ever seen, and then it gets exploited. In response to Go's article, a university spokesperson tells KGW, the health and safety of our student athletes is always our top priority, and there are many sports performance professionals on our staff that work closely in supporting student athletes, including our medical team, athletic trainers, sports scientists, and nutritionists. Go says he's hearing from athletes with similar stories from multiple schools. He hopes his work will help make a difference, starting at Oregon. I don't necessarily think that Robert Johnson's a bad person. I think he's doing the best he can do. He, he's paid to, to win meets and, and produce national champions. I think he probably should approach this a little differently in the future, and, and hopefully I think he will. Catherine Cook, KGW News.